my channel and this is your first time double welcome my name is gabrielle i also go by gaby and here on the channel we are misty gage i say that every time <laughs> and this is really my first video video like sit down video in my new apartment in virginia and i'm super excited about it i love our setup now and pretty sure all of our videos will be in the living room here other than like hair videos in my bathroom because um the lighting so my other place i had really awesome uh lighting to where you know it didn't really interfere with the video but my bed is now against a window so yeah the bedroom setup y'all were used to in columbus no longer exists uh so yeah i think i like the couch and actually i think i ended up calling this couch conversations if not disregard this <laughs> but in my mind i'm like you know these sit down videos now that i'll be on my couch and we have a real couch now um it can be couch conversation so today's talk is me coming on here and just being real with y'all which i feel like this is my first real like get down and dirty real talk that y'all are used to a lot of you guys follow me i feel so bad about this but a lot of you guys follow me for the fact that i do these very transparent open and sometimes taboo topic um talks with you guys i've gotten that several times in my dms like you know all this other stuff is cute they don't word it like this but in my mind i read all the other stuff you do is cute but i follow you because of like the talks that you do either that or natural hair and so yeah it was long overdue so yeah i don't really know where to begin i did write some stuff down on my phone for me to kind of follow and have an actual pattern about what I'm doing today. So we'll see how this goes. I just want to come on here and talk to you guys about like what 2020 has been. And I'm sure by now you have seen 50,000, 11 million videos or blogs about people talking about how this whole year is unprecedented and all this stuff. And it's like that word can die. Unprecedented. I've heard that in emails and talks and speeches. I've heard it on the news. I don't really watch the news, but I've heard it on the news. It's just like that word. I mean, yes, this is unprecedented what we're going through now in 2020. But, ooh. But yeah, just to kind of share with you guys, and I don't plan for this to all be negative. Y'all know me. Like, I'm always going to leave you with a nugget of positivity, all of that. But I also just want to be real. So, yeah, let's just talk about where 2020 started um 2020 started off on fire i don't know about y'all maybe this is not your testimony but my testimony is that 2020 started off a one i started off the year doing the daniel fast with transformation church if you haven't seen that video make sure to check that out click the link above and i was on it y'all i was doing the bible study um <laughs> notice that was where oh we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about it um i was doing the bible study uh that book series that i have also featured on my channel if you haven't seen those videos make sure to go check those out but i was waking up at like 6 a.m or something crazy like that and like there was so much order to my day i was so inspired i felt so close to god like i felt like he was using that entire time to just speak to me like crazy sorry if y'all heard that that's the ice machine forgot to turn it off um but yeah so everything was really just on fire i was excited like let me just put this clip in here so y'all can see how how lit I was about 2020. 2020 has been shaking so far. Do you hear me shaking? Like the Lord is just doing all the things. I'm just telling you, please strap on your seat belts for 2020 like i just can't even begin to tell you this year is going to be so um it already is so amazing but like god has given me sneak peek views like just previews into what he has up his sleeve this year and i'm just blown so yeah y'all see it i was eager honey i had visions i had goals i had dreams for 2020 and then things changed very quickly i would love to say that all of those things sustained the pandemic and all i'm going to tell you is in all honesty and transparency they did not they did not they did not survive the pandemic my schedule did not survive the pandemic 
my time in the word and boot up time with Jesus did not survive the pandemic. And that discipline that I had back then, none of those things. I would venture to say even some of my goals were like on their way to death because of the pandemic. So when the pandemic really hit, hit. So I know it was around earlier this year, but we didn't really feel the effects until like March when everything started shutting down. And I remember going in to my practicum site, my school, elementary school that I was working at, and there were like rumors of like, schools are gonna close down, da da da. And I will be honest, I was in disbelief. I was not disregarding the fact that people were getting sick and dying from COVID, not at all. But just like, especially if you think about what the news was talking about back then, to be honest, no one was really treating it. I don't wanna say no one. Cause somebody gonna fact check me and say, no, somebody, okay. But to me, the overall sense of COVID was like, you know, it's a bad flu. Um, definitely did not know it was that like um, contagious. So in my mind, I'm like, nah, it's not gonna, it's like, no, we're not gonna like close stuff down. Like, eh, okay. Y'all, I'm telling you, punk me. Cause I am pretty sure the very next day is when we got the email saying that all the schools are shutting down. Um, and at the time it was temporary. So they were just getting like an extra two weeks of spring break or something like that. I don't know. It was something like that. And at the time we were on spring break for um, Ohio State. And so they ended up just telling us they were extending our spring break. At the time, I think it was one week or two weeks, it was something like that. It might have been two weeks that they said right off the bat, um, just to like get everything settled and figure out what's going on. And I was in pure disbelief, purely. I just could not believe it. So in order to do my dissertation, I have to go through what is called IRB, it's the Institutional Review Board, which is just a fancy term for this group of higher ups in our uh, college, all colleges have them, all research institutions have them where they have to give the stamp of approval on the research that I want to do. Any research that happens through the campus with Ohio State's name on it has to be approved by this group of people, mainly to make sure people are out here researching, like, for example, like the syphilis study where, uh, you know, black men were going untreated, um, to make sure that you're doing ethical research. <laughs> like you're not doing something crazy out here that's gonna harm people. And so IRB is a huge step. And I had been kicking myself to get my IRB done since that December. I really wanted to have it done in December. I got um, my dissertation proposal meeting done in December and in my mind it was like, I, I could have immediately gone and submitted my IRB. But winter break came and I was like, ooh break. And then when I got back, it was like, you know, excuse after excuse. And I was like, eh, I have time. Ha, 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 ha. If I could go back to my former self and just say, you never know what could happen, like a worldwide pandemic. Anywho, I ended up getting it in, I think in February. Um, but obviously by the time pandemic hit, I still hadn't heard back yet. And if I had done it back in December, the reason I'm telling you this long story is because if I had done it in December, I would have hit the ground running with collecting my data in the spring. And I probably would have had my data before the pandemic went down and had what I needed to write my dissertation. But literally my dissertation, the, the remaining two chapters are on hold until I have my data. And then when the schools closed, and then we found out they were closing for the rest of the year. It was like, what? I wanted to have my data before internship year so that I could write over the summer and I could defend my dissertation by the end of this year. And y'all would be calling me doctor around December of this year. Mm -mm. Let that dream die, sis. Let it die, let it go. Let it blow in the wind because that is not at all what happened. IRB was on hold, everything was on hold, everything shut down. And I get it, there are people who had way worse things to deal with. I mean, illness in the family, death in the family, I get it. But also a lot of us had to literally grieve things that, you know, we had our eyes on. Like I feel for the people whose commencement was postponed, which now with this pandemic still going, it's like, what is postponed? Like. Until when? 2023? I'm about for my 2020 degree? Like, what are you talking about? 
Um, and me processing the fact that all of this could still be going on potentially by next May when I'm supposed to walk, which means I won't have a commencement, which is just like, I can't even, I'm not even gonna go there. It's too far in the future for me to be that worried about it right now, because I will cry right now, so. And, I, and as a person of faith, I guess at first it was embarrassing for me to admit how just like, whoa, everything was. I was trying to stay really normal and like calm and miss myself. But then like the news just kept coming out more and more. And it was just like, I don't know what's happening anymore. I ended up going back uh, to Akron to my parents' house to stay with them for a while, just cause I was like, I don't wanna have to like maintain my own groceries and all that and thank god i was able to have a place to go back to um unfortunately i still did have to pay rent in columbus so I paid like three months of rent and stayed in a whole nother city that's fine but um it was nice to just be around people and to quarantine with other people so i went but there were definitely pros and cons to being out of my own space um like i hadn't lived with my parents full time like that in I want to say eight years um i mean i did used to come home from the summer for the summers from undergrad but like yeah it just it was a lot and so dealing with that with the pandemic and then like work ended up picking up again at some point but at that point i think we had like three weeks or a month of spring break it was like crazy everything was online everything was shifting and I did not shift with it. I will tell you right now, my alarm would go off in the morning and I would just ignore it. Um, I think I stopped either setting an alarm to be honest or maybe I just had an alarm to feel guilty about myself for still sleeping in. But I used to sleep, like my sleep schedule was crazy. There were nights like where I was up till 3 a.m. nights in a row. Doing what? I don't know, but it was just like, nothing matters anymore like i remember there was a a meme on facebook that was like we can pronounce the l in salmon because nothing matters anymore and i was like that sums it up like i there is no order anymore like what um and so with that like i said the order of just like life and discipline which is already something that i was challenged with before hence why i was you know trying to make that change in the beginning of the year so when that pandemic hit, it just, it blew all that apart. And did anybody else have that pressure at the beginning of the pandemic when everybody was like, you should come out of this an entrepreneur and you should come out of this better than how you started it and use this time wisely. And it was just like, it's such a confusing message when it's like the only reason we're home right now, y'all like this is because of a worldwide pandemic that is taking people out in droves. Like, this is not a vacation. <laughs> like, what are y'all talking about? But then on the other hand, it's like, okay, if I do have all this time, should I be doing something miraculous with this time? And going back and forth, y'all, I promise you, my mind felt like TV static. I can't, there's no better way for me to describe it. Like, literally every day I would wake up and go to bed with just TV static. I, I remember like, bursting out in tears randomly at random points of the day like trying to go forward and just feeling stuck it just was it was it was pretty nuts to be honest and i hope i'm not alone with that I, i'm sure there are other people who feel the same way but that tv static feeling has honestly lingered until like this past week if i'm being 100 percent honest um, and I feel like that TV static feeling of like just an unclear mind, unsettled, juggling all sorts of things, feeling less than, like beating myself up, all of that was literally, it was just like a cycle, you know? It was just, it filled my mind for, what is this now, four months. And so in that is why, like, I'm not giving excuses at all. I hope this is not y'all's testimony, but that is why i so easily fell off of like the bible study and also i felt really guilty about that because it's like this is a time where believers really need to stand up and be present and be in prayer and be loud and vocal with our you know faith but i just couldn't muster it up i literally i had such a difficult time with that and then i felt guilty about that which 
kept me from even trying to do it. Like it was literally just an ugly downward spiral of just like, okay, I really think I suck and I'm not handling this well. So I'ma just sit in my poo. Like <laughs> that's how it felt. And then you add the racial injustices that continued to be exposed. Let's be honest. The same things that we were chanting and yelling this time around, we've been yelling and chanting for years now, particularly on social media with Black Lives Matter. For whatever reason, people decided to hear us this time a little bit. And for that, I am grateful, but it is this like cognitive dissonance of like, why y'all ain't been hearing us? Like, why did you have to watch a man be knelt on to his death, suffocated for y'all to get some, it's perfect, okay. Okay, um, so dealing with those feelings of just like, I'm tired of being the one calling y'all out. Like black folk are tired of always saying, see me, hear me, I exist, let me live. Can I have a life too? Like, we're tired of that. But that's what we are being forced to do once again with George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. I mean, literally, Ahmaud Arbery, there are just so many names to insert there. So dealing with those feelings refusing to watch the video because that probably would have just honestly put me over the edge. And then also on top of that, I made the decision after some difficult times to take my relationship more private. And I know a lot of you have been waiting on me to say something about this because I will be honest, my, my relationship did kind of just disappear from social media. And I remember I promised you guys a few videos that actually were in the process of being edited and put up way back in May, I think. Um, but then I made the decision not to post those and to really focus on um, the health of my relationship because at the time, and, and even still, there are things that we just really needed to buckle down and focus on. We did go through a tumultuous period that literally was like probably the last thing <laughs> I needed on top of everything else that I just described that was happening with this pandemic. And amid that, I had to find an apartment to move into. I had to find funds. I was packing up my house to move across states in the middle of a pandemic. It's just like... Y'all, are you following me? Like, I feel like this list is just, it's rolling out the door. But what changed for me was getting to a point where literally enough was enough. Like, and I just got to that point this past week where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. But what I really had to do in this enough is enough epiphany that I had this past week was to take charge back um, over my life. Like I felt like I was allowing life to happen to me. Like ever since the pandemic, it was just like, whatever happens, happens. Like I'm just letting life, you know, after being disappointed and frustrated and you know, anxious and all that and not being connected to the vine in a way that I really knew I needed to be, it was so easy for me to just almost like lay down and just let the cars roll over me you know like it just was like okay whatever happens happens but this past week it was really like okay no i feel like there's something that i'm robbing the world of when i don't take charge of my life when i don't get the rest that i need when i don't um prioritize when i don't like put forth my best self i'm robbing the world and i'm also robbing myself of self-care um so i actually spent an evening this past week looking up um, morning routines and night routines and tips for organization and productivity but i had to be careful because i didn't want this to become another perfectionism thing because i'm already working oh that could be its own video working on ruining tearing up destroying this perfectionism ideals that i have in my head um but i'm really focusing on um, sticking to a schedule just so that I can get the rest that I need so that my mind this TV static noisiness will chill out and I can think clearly and I can be creative and I can have time to do the things I want to do um, on top of the things that I have to do that like that was really the vision behind um, me kind of getting on a schedule not so I could be an energizer bunny but really so I could have more time for me and the things that I love even beyond school psychology, which is what I'm going to school. So just a few of the things that I've changed is having a much earlier 
reasonable bedtime um, that I'm sticking to waking up much earlier, which I'm able to do because I went to bed the night before. Getting back into the word and having my morning dates with Jesus, which I'm super excited about that. I'm using a bunch of new tools, which stay tuned because I am gonna make a video about how I fell off and then how I got back up on the horse and the different tools that I've discovered um, to help me, which have been so helpful. And then I'm deciding to rebrand my creative uh, spaces. It's been a very long time since I posted my last blog post on there, which I just feel so awful about because I pay for it every year <laughs> to have my domain. So I really want to use it. You know, I want to get some words out of it. Um, so yeah, I decided to rebrand that. I'm gonna rebrand my YouTube. It'll still be Miss GCH, but you know, just give everything a fresh look and get back to the things that I really feel God is calling me to do because he's placed so many gifts inside of me and I just wanna be a good steward of them and bless his people and bring him glory through these gifts. So all in all, I essentially just decided I am going to take charge of my life. Like, again, I'm not gonna let life happen to me. Yes, this pandemic is so far out of my control, but I can sit around and keep saying unprecedented until I'm blue in the face, or I can adjust and still have some victory in this season, in 2020. I still wanna have something to say positive about 2020. But before I go, I do wanna just share that the Lord is still faithful. He's still good. Like God's goodness is not affected by a pandemic. God's goodness is not affected by us falling short. Like God is good because God is just good. You know, God is merciful because that's who he is. Like that's his character. Like God is just, he's just good. And he has still been good and still been faithful to me through all of this. I mean, getting here, finding this apartment, having the funds to get the things that I needed. I was able to save a lot of money because I was home with my parents. And this internship, y'all, I mean, just, when I tell you the epitome, even though it might be a challenge because our school district has decided to do 100% distance learning all online, so we won't be able to interact with the kids, which, I mean, significantly impacts my ability to do work as a school psychologist. Like all of our work is really in-person work with students. Um, so it's gonna be interesting, but the, the opportunity to be here in this internship is just, it's so far beyond anything I would've had in Ohio. Like I said that with hope beforehand, but now like I see it and just the opportunities available to me here and just how the Lord even set me up to be here, like how I found out about this, like y'all, it's all so crazy and it is such a reminder every day of God's goodness, his faithfulness, his commitment to um, his promises and his destiny for us. Like I just feel so encouraged and yeah, so I, I wanted to share that with you all because yes, 2020, you know, me in January versus in July 2020 me, hmm, two different people. Um, God has definitely exposed some things in me throughout this time. But the Lord sees what the enemy did and he is turning it around for our good. So I am grateful and I wanna share that with you all. Take some time to maybe just sit down and look at, you know, what are you thankful for? And if you have a similar story to me where life just started happening to you, like everything just kind of got away from you, um, and you lost your footing, I encourage you to fight to get your footing back. I mean, that is literally me right now. I just started, I told y'all, just this week, but my mind is already clearer. I already feel um, just a, a lifted feeling, you know? It's just something that I haven't really experienced since before the pandemic. So don't let life continue to keep happening to you. If you need help, assistance, get in contact with a therapist, a counselor, talk to someone, take charge of your situation, take charge of your life and keep moving forward. So I think that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you were encouraged by this video. I hope hearing how I'm trying to take charge of my situation will help you to figure out how to take charge of yours. And ultimately, I'm just really happy to be sitting down in front of a camera and talking to you guys again. So if there's something you want me to cover um, on my channel coming up, I do have some things lined up, but totally open to what you guys want to hear from me. So I hope you are subscribed and I hope you've turned on that notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I post videos. And and yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.